This is Black Fire. It seems like a cool novelty made with a sodium vapor lamp and burning table salt. But at the heart of this black fire lies one of the greatest discoveries in science called the anomalous Zeeman effect. I'm going to show you how black fire stops being so black in magnetic fields and why this one fact led to the discovery and measurement of magnetic fields on the sun and even the technology we use to look inside solid matter with MRI machines. In 1896, Dutch scientist Peter Zeeman was experimenting in his lab. He had a device similar to this called a diffraction grating. It's a material that, like a prism, can split light and spread it out according to its wavelength. For example, if I look at white light, I can see a full spectrum. But if I excite individual elements, the spectrum isn't spread out anymore. There are only specific wavelengths that show up as lines on the spectrum. For example, this is the spectrum of helium. and this is neon. He was specifically looking at light coming from sodium vapor. To do this, he soaked a piece of asbestos in salt water and placed it in a Bunsen burner. It looked like this, a bright yellow flame. Then Zeeman had an idea. He had read that Michael Faraday had tried to affect light directly using strong magnetic fields but found that light itself wasn't affected. But Zeeman wondered, what if magnetic fields affect the atoms emitting the light, not the light after it's emitted? So he placed the flame itself in a strong magnetic field and then looked at it through the diffraction grating. And he noticed something strange. Whenever the flame was in the magnetic field, the image of the flame spread out slightly. This meant that the magnetic field was shifting the frequency of the light both higher and lower than its original frequency. But why would that happen? They knew electrons orbited the nucleus and a moving charge creates a magnetic field. So an orbiting electron behaves like a tiny magnet. Now imagine placing that electron in an external magnetic field. It will try to align with that field now. For example, I have two strong magnets here. If I place a smaller magnet between them, it naturally wants to align with the magnetic field. If I try to rotate it out of alignment, it takes energy to do so. The same idea applies to electrons in orbitals. Normally, sodium emits light when an electron jumps from a 3s orbital up to a 3p orbital, and then falls back down, emitting a photon. In the 3p orbital, the electron can have three different orientations. Normally, all of these orientations have the same energy because the atom is rotationally symmetric. But when you apply a magnetic field, two of these orientations are no longer aligned with the field. So instead of one energy level, there are now three. This is called Zeeman splitting. When you apply a magnetic field, it changes the energy states electrons can jump into, and that changes the light they emit. But can we actually test this? In a high magnetic field, it's only on the order of about 0.01 nanometers or less than I need to distinguish between these wavelengths. And I can't measure that, even with a benchtop spectrometer. But there's another way to see this using black fire. Instead of using a flame, another way to produce sodium light is with a low pressure sodium vapor lamp. This lamp heats sodium metal into a vapor and runs a high voltage through it, producing almost perfectly monochromatic light essentially one wavelength at about 589 nanometers. Now, if I shine that light through my sodium flame, something very cool happens. The light from the lamp has exactly the right energy to excite the sodium atoms in the flame. That means the flame absorbs the light. Since this is the only light source in the room, the flame appears black. But if I apply a magnetic field to the flame, new energy states appear that don't match the wavelength of the lamp now. That means the flame absorbs less light and becomes brighter. So let's see if we can actually measure this. In order to do this, I need a very strong magnetic field. I have two strong neodymium magnets taped to these boards. So opposite poles are facing each other here. And it's a really strong field inside here. If I take another <laughs> magnet and try to flip it over, I literally can't flip it. <laughs> can't turn it. So let's see what happens when we lower this down over the flame. But before we continue, I want to thank Raycon for sponsoring this video and sending me their bone conduction headphones. These things are so cool. They sit right outside of your ears, and instead of blocking your ear canal, they use bone conduction. So the sound travels through the vibrations in your bones. That means I can listen to music, podcasts, or calls while still hearing what's going on around me. 
because nothing's blocking my ear canal. And not only is this a cool way to transfer sound signals to your brain, but it's so much nicer than regular earphones. When I'm just going for a walk or doing experiments or even just cleaning up in the lab, I can stay aware of traffic, people, or equipment around me without sacrificing sound quality. They're also built for everyday use. You get up to 13 hours of battery life and they're IP68 waterproof and dustproof. So sweat, rain, and even sand isn't a problem. And the no bud design stays comfortable and doesn't slip while you move. And the nice thing is that Raycon delivers premium performance without the premium price tag. So their quality rivals the big audio brands, but at about half the cost. Over 3 million people already love Raycon and they back it with a 30 day happiness guarantee. I've been loving using my Raycon headphones. So if you wanna try them out as well, it's the perfect time to upgrade your audio for the new year. Go to buyraycon.com slash the Action Lab BC to get 20% off site wide. And thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Okay, let's lower the magnets. At first, it doesn't look like much is happening, but if we look more closely and measure the brightness at a single point in the flame, we see exactly what we expect. When I lower the magnets, the flame gets brighter. When I lift the magnets back up, the brightness decreases. This is wild that I can actually measure this. I even put aluminum blockers around the flame to make sure the brightness change wasn't caused by wind or reflections from the magnets. And even then, the flame is clearly brighter in the magnetic field. This confirms the Zeeman effect. Magnetic fields directly affect the wavelength of light emitted by the atoms. The consequences of this one fact are enormous. For example, if we want to know whether sunspots have strong magnetic fields, we can compare the spectrum of light coming from sunspots to the rest of the sun. When we do that, we see Zeeman splitting. So the light coming off of these sources tells us about the local magnetic fields. The Zeeman effect doesn't just apply to electrons as well. Protons and neutrons have magnetic moments too. So applying a magnetic field changes the energy states they can occupy. And that's exactly how an MRI machine works. MRI scanners apply extremely strong magnetic fields and split the energy levels of protons in your body. And then by probing transitions between these Zeeman split states, they can build detailed images of exactly what's happening inside you, all without using harmful radiation. Now normal Zeeman splitting by itself is already pretty complicated, but we're not done yet. It turns out sodium doesn't behave exactly the way the simple Zeeman effect predicts. In fact, the splitting was so unexpected that it was named the anomalous Zeeman effect. The reason for this is that sodium has an unpaired electron, and electrons themselves have intrinsic angular momentum, or spin as we call it. Zeeman didn't know this at the time. This intrinsic spin gives electrons their own magnetic moment, meaning the atom effectively has an internal magnetic field even when no external field is applied. Because of this, the p orbitals in sodium already have slightly different energies. So it's like the atom is applying its own external magnetic field to this electron orbital. That's why if you use a very good diffraction grating, you don't just see one sodium line at 589 nanometers, you actually see two at about 589 and 589.6 nanometers. And then when you really do apply a magnetic field, these two energy levels split into even more states. This is called the anomalous Zeeman effect. This anomalous Zeeman effect is actually quite normal because most atoms have unpaired electrons, but it took quantum mechanics to fully explain why it happens. So Zeeman uncovered a truth that helped lead to one of the greatest discoveries in modern physics, all by playing with a little fire in his lab. So to all of you budding scientists out there, remember, sometimes playing with fire in the right context is okay. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, remember to leave them in the comments section and we'll see you next time.